So in the previous video, we actually covered dry type of corrosion that is chemical corrosion. Uh, what I am going to cover today would be wet or electrochemical corrosion. Here it could be again of two types. So hi, I am Neha and let us go ahead with what is wet corrosion or electrochemical corrosion. Now here uh, electrochemical means there is generation of electrochemical cell. So there has to be an anode, there has to be a cathode and then there has to be an electrolyte solution. First thing is that. Second thing, it is wet. That means obviously liquid is there which gives you the medium. So a presence of moisture is there. Now here what happens is here where a conducting liquid is in contact with the metal then there is generation of electrochemical cell. So basically two conditions uh, you have to like met. Uh, the first condition could be if a single metal is there but then the conducting liquid is there uh, with uh, touch with the metal. That is the first condition. Second condition is when two dissimilar metals are there. The same metal is not there but there are two different metals in conjunction to together and they both are either immersed or dipped partially in the solution. So that type of corrosion also will uh, be electrochemical corrosion. So here the metal could be single in presence of a liquid or there are two different types of metal in presence of a liquid. In both cases what uh, would be there, there has to be development of an anodic site, there has to be development of a cathodic site and obviously the current flows uh, through the conducting solution. Now let us go ahead in detail how does it work. So first is the anodic area where anodic reaction takes place. I hope you remember oxidation occurs at anode. So the metal loses that electron and the loss of electron is oxidation and it forms a cation right. Now this is the oxidation reaction liberation of electron. Now this metal cation has two options what to do further. There in dry corrosion it was that it makes a oxide film. But here it has two options, either it get dissolved in the solution, right, or it forms a combined state oxide or some other uh, compound. So here it has two options, either get dissolved in the solution or it makes a combined uh, state compound. Now coming to uh, the cathodic reaction. Cathodic reaction means obviously reduction because oxidation occurs at anode and reduction occurs at cathode. So here the consumption that is gain of electron will take place in two manner. Either there will be evolution of hydrogen gas or absorption of oxygen. Now let us go ahead and detail. L let me show you one more time what is happening here is it is a wet corrosion that means there is presence of a liquid a moisture it is an electrochemical corrosion that means there is development of electrochemical cell so a cell where anodic area is there the reaction would be oxidation and the cathodic area is there the reaction could be either of these two now either of these two on what basis on the basis of ph of the solution if the solution is acidic in nature, obviously you do understand that acid release hydrogen like they can give, right? They can donate. So hydrogen evolution, the name you can remember by this that it occurs in acidic medium because here the hydrogen gets evolved easily, correct? And absorption of oxygen takes place either in the basic medium or the neutral medium. So first you have to understand that the medium could be acidic. If it is acidic, evolution of hydrogen will take place and if it is based on neutral, absorption of oxygen will take place. So that is sorted. Now coming to one by one, what happens in hydrogen evolution? Anode reaction would remain same, right? Oxidation would remain same. Reduction will change. So at cathode what will happen? The medium will give H plus. It will take up that electron. Hydrogen gas is liberated. So the electron flows from uh, the metal anode to cathode. They complete the circuit. At the same time hydrogen gas is evolved. Let me show you one more time. What happens here in evolution of hydrogen? Let's say your iron metal is this. Fine, this is your entire hydrogen uh, iron metal. Now this is the area which is developed as a cathodic area. Uh, this much area is a cathodic area and this much area is anodic area. How it is decided? The metal, the area which is in direct contact with the medium, this area and this area is in direct contact with the medium. This is the medium, electrolytic solution, right? That becomes anode. That's clear. And this area is not in direct contact. It is in, not in direct contact, right? What is this? This could be any uh, in uh, heterogeneity, you may say, 
what do you mean by heterogeneity means let's say the entire material is there but then there is some sand particle here or there is some dust particle here right so now this iron is not in contact with the liquid it is in the contact with the dust particle while this iron is in contact with the liquid so because of this uh, heterogeneous nature you may say heterogeneous nature that means it's not homogeneous not same because of this heterogeneity the same metal develop anodic and cathodic regions so i guess now it is clear that the same iron becomes anode here and becomes cathode here and this much area becomes cathode so this area cathode this area anode this is electrolyte i guess the cell is developed now when the cell is developed reaction would be this iron forming iron 2 plus h plus takes up and the hydrogen gas is liberated now this h plus ions gets conducted due to this electrolyte electron flow uh, takes place within the metal from anode to cathode so the circuit gets completed so basically in evolution of hydrogen it causes the displacement of hydrogen ion from the acidic solution secondly the metals above hydrogen in the electrochemical series they are going to evolute the hydrogen that is what you have already read in the electrochemistry chapter i guess the main thing to note here is anodic areas would be large in comparison to that of cathode i hope you got the point coming to the next one is absorption of oxygen now here what happens is uh, let's say basic medium or aqueous medium is there and now this is my iron what i have done is i have made a scale of uh, a protective layer of iron here right there is a protective layer which is going to prevent the corrosion now what happens is sometimes this layer may have a crack may have a pore now what happens because of the crack again heterogeneity heterogeneous nature gets developed why because this iron here is in direct contact with the electrolyte this area is in direct contact with the electrolyte right while this area is not in direct contact because there is a layer protective layer right so the same metal here what happens the anodic area is small because that is how it is in direct contact and that is anodic area and the cathodic area is large so here anodic areas would be small and the cathodic area would be large the first difference is this second difference obviously is because of the medium which is aqueous medium third difference is obviously of the reaction now here oxygen reacts with that iron like it forms hydroxide then iron hydroxide gets formed that is the reaction earlier it was hydrogen evolution this is oxygen absorption now iron and hydroxide diffuses and wherever they meet they form a rust which is iron hydroxide ferrous hydroxide rust formation takes place right that is absorption of oxygen for you coming to the next one now here if the oxygen is enough the ferrous hydroxide will get converted to the ferric hydroxide you can call it as a yellow rust right but if the supply of oxygen is limited you will get a black magnetite compound uh, that's what you can see here so the amount of oxygen basically is going to accelerate the corrosion and the rust formation if you can see here in the reaction if you supply more oxygen as per the law it's going to get in the forward direction right so it means it will force the cathodic reaction to go to the right and hence more hydroxide will be formed and more corrosion will take place secondly if it is going to the right hand side the consumption or you can say the demand of the electron will get increased and that's how anodic reaction has to increase because it has to supply the electron so basically the demand and supply would be there that's how there will be a increase in the corrosion so increase in the amount of oxygen has two effects uh, obviously it will go uh, forward the reaction to the right direction more hydroxide will be formed at the same time more requirement of electron will be there also there is a point to note that the corrosion always occurs at anode but the rust is deposited near the cathode because iron get diffusion faster it's a smaller ion uh, this i told you in the last video also it will come out and it will get diffused here because oxide ion is there iron will come out so basically what are we doing in the electrochemical corrosion first there is formation of anodic and cathodic areas which are in contact with each other second is presence of conducting medium which is in contact with the metallic area then the third is corrosion of anodic area only because here the oxidation takes place loss of electron takes place so oxidation occurs Uh, or corrosion occurs at anodic area only and the third is formation of corrosion product somewhere between anodic and cathodic 
wherever the metallic ion goes is able to diffuse and it gets the anion the corrosion product will settle there that's electrochemical corrosion for you in the next video i am going to differentiate dry and wet corrosion but that's all for today i hope you have understood the electrochemical corrosion in detail if yes do mention in the comment it will give me motivation and yes do subscribe for further videos thank you